Hello, my name is Dr. Christine O'Connor and this is a lecture on drug delivery as part of the introductory medicinal chemistry course. Drug delivery, um, there are always some questions to ask. Uh, why is drug delivery necessary? Um, are some drugs more difficult to deliver and why is that? Are some areas of the body more difficult to access and why is that? So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the current drug delivery methods and maybe if you want to have a little think of what you um, would think of in terms of drug delivery and what does drug delivery actually mean. So there are different types of drug delivery systems. Um, so any pharmaceutical formulation is a drug delivery system and examples of those are creams, eye drops, inhalers, tablets and there's many more examples. Most of these drug delivery systems are now thought of being conventional as there is no specific new technology required in their preparation or use and the pharmaceutical scientists are always striving to make advances in more specialised systems to overcome delivery problems. So why do we need to develop new drug delivery systems? Um, first of all, in the clinic, we want to improve their therapeutic index so that they're not too toxic and that they do actually work um, to cure a disease. The pharmacokinetics, so you're looking at a drug having a short half-life, so that means that it would pass through the body quite quickly or have a large volume of distribution and a high clearance. Again, this is to do with the metabolism of the drug and how quickly it's excreted from the body. Or if the drug didn't um, have a strong response to the receptor or to overcome other anatomical or cellular barriers within the body. Um, other aspects are the biopharmaceutical side of things. So the drug may have high membrane binding, biological instability or low absorption uh, within the body. Or in terms of the pharmaceutical side of things, the drug could have chemical instability, such as it could be photosensitive or poor solubility, so it may not dissolve well in water. And then the commercial side of things, so the marketing edge, which is never to be underestimated, um, is, is very strong and has to be considered also. So just the example given here in the images is the uh, nic nicotine delivery systems. Targeted drug delivery or site-specific drug delivery is really where uh, research is focused nowadays. So this means the selective delivery of a drug to a specific region in the body. The aim of the targeted drug delivery is to improve the therapeutic effectiveness of a drug, to decrease the dosage required of the drug, to enhance the safety and comfort of the patient and to decrease the cost of the treatment. So if this, the drug is targeted, that means less of it would have to be administered and this would decrease the cost of the drug. So, and ointments can um, have a more site-specific treatment. All of these modes of drug administration are not strictly regarded though as targeted therapies. Approaches to drug targeting are, for example, by bi the biological approach, which is called the magic bullet, where the development of a drug that is biologically selective for the target region. The chemical approach using prodrugs is the development of drugs that are biologically inert and become activated at the intended site of action. So they're switched on within the body. And the physical approach, which is more um, referred to as the magic cannon is the use of some sort of drug delivery deli vehicle to transport the drug to the specific site. So an example here is the biological approach and it's the use of monoclonal antibodies direct directed towards an antigen residing within the target site. So the drug can be linked uh, to the antibody or to 
a relevant fraction of that antibody. A chemical example here is the use of prodrugs, which again, as we said, are pharmacologically inert and they're activated with inside the body. So for a prodrug to be effective at targeting, it should have preferential access to a target site and it should be activated more readily at the active site than at other sites. So one example here is the development of L-DOPA or levodopa for the delivery of dopamine to the brain, um, which is in the treatment of Parkinson's disease. So you can see the differences here between dopamine and L-DOPA. So dopamine, there's problems delivering dopamine as it's too polar to cross the blood brain barrier. So that's what BBB stands for, the blood brain barrier. And L-DOPA is more polar, um, but there is an active transport mechanism for L-amino acids. So once past the blood brain barrier, the aromatic L-amino acid decarboxylase generates dopamine. This isn't an ideal administration route as only 1% of the L-DOPA passes the blood-brain barrier. So there's still a research work to do on this. So it is a mode for targeted delivery for the treatment of Parkinson's disease. And there's just some diagrams here to show you again the difference between L-DOPA and dopamine and also the difference between the uh, nerve endings in a Parkinson's patient and a healthy patient. So it's really a lack of dopamine. In chemotherapy, so current anti-cancer therapy, research is based on um, the activity of cisplatin. Um, the toxicity of this drug and its inability to treat many cancer cells presented a challenge for inorganic chemists to develop new platinum anti-cancer drugs. And metals such as ruthenium, titanium, gold, nickel and palladium and arsenic have been investigated as alternatives. So cisplatin is used in um, the clinic to treat cancers. Um, current chemotherapeutic treatment involves the active drug traveling indiscriminately throughout the body. The effectiveness of the drug is diluted and the patient experiences toxic side effects. Um, there is a way to um, target such drugs using photodynamic therapy. So it's where an inactive drug travels through the body and then uh, activation occurs at the site of the um, disease or the infected site using a uh, laser to switch on the drug. So just an overview here, looking at the pictures, the drug or the chemical is injected into the body. The chemical accumulates or concentrates at the site of the tumor. And then this chemical is activated by uh, some form of laser light and then the tumor is selectively destroyed and this is avoiding harming healthy cells within the body. And just the last point here on this slide is to note that um, the optimal tissue penetration by light is between 650 and 800 nanometers. So your drug has to absorb within that region because the light has to come through your skin and your tissue and has to be um, switched on by absorbing light in that range. Physical uh, drug delivery systems um, are used. So the drug delivery system uses biologically inert macromolecules to deliver the drug to a targeted site. Um, it's a large growing industry. So it's likely to become more and more important in the future as drugs become more difficult to deliver. So uh, novel drug delivery can overcome many of the administration problems or it can be used to achieve improved targeting. And targeting will always be um, a challenge in moving drugs across biological membranes. So other points that should be noted uh, 
is that we have an aging population. So you'll have to look at how we can uh, facilitate delivering drugs to an older population of patients. Um, again, the knowledge of um, our biology of how our bodies work and how diseases work is growing. So there's a growing number of drug targets then, which is known as genomics. Also the individualized therapy. So again, looking at uh, each individual and seeing how they should be treated uh, with medicines rather than having generic medicines for um, a whole population. The use of nutraceuticals in foods to address um, diseases and also a lot of these drug delivery systems are used in terms of um, lifestyle and cosmetic pharmacy. So uh, you will note that a lot of um, the new cosmetics will have different types of uh, delivery systems that they use as well in their packaging and, and in how they are delivered. And there's just two uh, little cartoons there for you to enjoy. Thank you.